Hi, I'm Brian McLaren. In this uh, time of global pandemic, uh, we're going to be seeing numbers about deaths. And this is going to face all of us with realities that we normally kind of keep at bay. Uh, I guess we do it to keep our sanity, uh, but we're going to not be able to avoid it. We're going to see the names of famous people who are taken by this virus. We're going to have probably before this is over in our circle of friends and family, uh, we're going to have to face death in some intense ways. And I, I'll just say, speaking for myself, I haven't really felt that vulnerable or fragile for a long time. And I know certain moments it washes over me, wow, this could infect me and I could be gone in, in a week, in a day. It seems to me at times like this, we have to confront our death and the reality of death rather than run away from it and suppress it. So I'd like to talk about some ways that we can trust death. First, you can trust death to come. You just don't know when. And part of the gift of a time like this is to have all of us just come to terms with the fact that sooner or later it's going to happen and uh, for us to re reorient our lives with this realization that they won't last forever as we know them here on earth. Second, you can trust death to be non-discriminatory. Uh, we know that this virus seems to uh, take the old disproportionately, but each day we're hearing accounts of young people who also fall prey to this virus. Death is non-discriminatory. It doesn't care if you're old or young. It doesn't care if you're rich or poor. It doesn't care if you're Christian or Muslim or Buddhist or Hindu. Death is non-discriminatory. A reminder to us that our systems of discrimination, of creating little us groups, in groups, and shutting everybody else out, death pushes all of that aside. You can trust that death will not be the end. Um, as Christians, we believe that resurrection is baked into death. I, I love how Father Richard often says that, you know, the, the, the crucifixion and resurrection weren't plan B. But no, God's self-revelation to us through creation and through Christ is a revelation that nothing is ultimately lost. And that in every death comes a resurrection of some sort, of some way. You can trust death will not be the end of everything. And you can trust death to offer preemptive gifts now. If it weren't for death, uh, we would take so much more for granted. And in fact, when we learn to live with a healthy awareness of the shortness and fragility of life, we receive a gift of appreciating each present moment. And death in this way teaches us that happiness doesn't come from having. Happiness comes from appreciating what we have. Uh, we all know, uh, in fact, one of my uh, granddaughters has been singing the song, she must have heard it from her mother, from Joni Mitchell. Uh, don't it always seem to go, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. She can't quite get all the words, but that got till it's gone, you know, she's got. But those words carry some wisdom. And in these times, we can reappreciate the gifts of this present moment, what we have now, what we had a few months ago that we don't have now. We didn't even appreciate it then as we can appreciate it now looking back. Preemptive gifts that we can seize that come from, from the reality that our lives here on earth are a gift that life is short and fragile, but that love is the point. Death uh, is a mystery. It's complex. It elicits all kinds of emotions. But if we approach it in the right way, uh, we can become wiser living in the light of death. When I used to be a pastor and did a lot of funerals, I, uh, I often would quote a verse from Ecclesiastes, strange verse that says, better to be in the house of mourning than in the house of feasting. 
And I think the wisdom of that verse is to say that when we're in the presence of death, uh, when we can't escape it and avoid it, it wakes us up to things and we learn wisdom we'd learn no other way.